Hello. So in this part B of the non-renewable natural resources, uh, I will discuss the so-called peak oil hypothesis. And uh, the main idea is to connect to this um, uh, optimal uh, price path, the hotelings rule that we discussed previously, and, and also like uh, evaluate it based on the empirical evidence that do the prices of oil and other other non-renewable resources uh, in the real world follow this kind of kind of price path predicted by the uh, this kind of optimization model. So firstly, let me introduce this notion of uh, peak oil. What does it uh, mean? Because uh, it's uh, it's very often still nowadays also also uh, referred to in the in the public discussions. Uh, so here is two diagrams that uh, that uh, illustrate the idea. So so we can think about the peak oil as this kind of um, uh, point of time or, or kind of uh, when when the when the consumption and and also at the basically the extraction of oil reaches its uh, highest point in the history, and then the idea is that uh, that eventually over time then uh, or after the peak is, has been received, then then the consumption of oil will decrease potentially quite dramatically also so on the left hand side this uh, this uh, diagram is uh, geologist predictions uh, and they're the they're the their prediction was that uh, 2010 the world would uh, would reach the peak in terms of oil consumption and then then the con uh, uh, i think this is also also if by production that where where oil is where oil is, is produced so there's for example middle east is the is the large uh, oil producing uh, area so in the in the middle east according to this geologist projection the the oil extraction would continue more or less what it is now and in these other opec countries with the with the monopoly but then in other regions there there's sharp sharp decrease in the in the oil extraction and of course the peak oil also also has uh, raised some concerns uh, so here is a uh, uh, on the right hand side there's uh, there's a picture from the uh, 1990s that uh, that how this kind of uh, uh, decrease in the oil consumption would lead the, to the end of the industrial civilization and uh, eventually lead to this kind of uh, uh, blackouts and and sharp decrease in the living standard so we would come back to this kind of using using candles and and uh, having having not uh, any any kind of uh, alternative energy so so that's also kind of a worrying uh, worrying scenario perhaps so that's the idea of peak also i want to want to um, then connect with the more empirical data that does the price path of of oil and other resources follow the the um, hotelings rule or and and do we have this kind of uh, concerns that uh, that our also the living standards are are decreasing uh, dramatically in the near future? So let's look at the historical price development. So so here is a, a diagram that uh, that in a very very long long time starting from the late nineteenth century indicates the price of oil per per bar barrel. And uh, interestingly, when the when the oil industry only only took its uh, its uh, initial steps, where there were some price booms already. Uh, there's a U.S. Civil War, and then also also later in the in the late nineteenth century, the prices were actually actually quite high, which led to the increase in the in the in the production. And uh, more recently, we've had here, of course, this kind of, uh, for example, this uh, unrest in the Middle East. Here is, uh, here is, for example, uh, in the 1980, there was uh, Iran-Iraq war that that, that uh, temporarily increased the price very high. Uh, there's also in the, we can see that there was in the in the. Um, Early two thousands, the price also also increased quite uh, quite high, and even the, the even the global financial crisis didn't really turn the turn the development down. But uh, but then then 
this this diagram goes till uh, 2016 and again this this price of oil was uh, was plummeting and even if we take then a look at the more recent history so here is uh, then from another source uh, uh, the Brent crude oil price uh, so if we take into account the inflation so 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 the blue curve here is then this kind of infl inflation adjusted uh, uh, real price of of oil so it has of course many many ups and downs and and a lot of volatility even in more more recent uh, years uh, but it's very difficult to see this kind of uh, uh, kind of price path that the hotelings rule uh, was predicting especially when we take into account the inflation adjustment uh, may, maybe in the nominal curve something you might might uh, revision but but when we take into account inflation in real terms it's very difficult to see any kind of uh, any kind of uh, constant increase in the price either in the very long term or or in the more recent uh, decades now this is of course just the case of oil what about other non-renewable resources so so here is then if we consider the prices of metals such as uh, chromium copper nickel tin uh, and and so on from the 1950s till uh, till uh, uh, 2010 i believe so even if we take uh, take in to consider metals or some kind of average of the metals it's also very difficult to see that uh, the price prices would be growing at constant rates like the like the hotelings rule would would predict so somehow the real world price development of of definitely non renewables such as such as copper which is used a lot in the, because of the, its uh, conducts electricity um it's very difficult to see that that uh, that uh, there would be this kind of constant const, constant growth of the in in the in the energy prices. So this is then then perhaps somewhat uh, somewhat puzzling to see such a sharp contrast with what the, what the theory would predict and what uh, what the what the empirical price price paths would uh, would seem to suggest. So I will then. Uh, discuss uh, what potential explanation based on technological progress uh, in the in the next video lesson see you then bye bye